Uh oh. I saw the sun come up. Ha <laughs> ha. What's going on everybody back on the scene same place different mission as you can see i was successful in the last video getting space on this trailer we got everything we need for our aeration mission and i'm going to go over it for you guys because i don't own that machine and i don't do this very often so i figure i'll break it down for you guys that can offer the service if your clients want it okay real quick step one mow the grass nice and short you're gonna wait two weeks before you mow the grass again after aerating seeding plugger machine pulls out plugs of dirt out of the ground so the seed and the fertilizer can fall down mainly the seed A little mini cultivator we go around the bare spots and tear up the dirt where it's all bare. It definitely needs to be redone. We have Southern Style Tall Turf Fescue and the Hydra Smart G fertilizer to go with it. Give it a little starting boost. So the cost of this mission, the plugger, about 90 bucks for the day. Mini tiller, about 55. We got the 100 pounds. What was that? 100 pounds? No. 50 pounds of grass seed was 160. Fertilizer was about 30. So my costs, my materials, rental fees, whatever, was $360. Charging a client 600 to do the work, which is 240 in labor. All right. Now, that did not include mowing the grass. So, additional 70 for push mowing and getting rid of this grass first. Quick breakdown for you guys. I do not enjoy this. I don't like it. I did it for decades and decades on large properties. But, since that yard represents me, I'll do it. It don't matter. Same with that one. We're going to hit some bare spots here in the next couple of videos. Got some extra work in the back of that one today. Nah, not today. No, I'm over there today. Whew. All right, let's get to work. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode in God's beautiful world. Making it even more beautiful one step at a time. So like I said, this aeration process, it's a beast. I don't like it at all. And Dalton's just now getting started in the morning. This is a ultimate warm up <laughs> routine to a day of work for sure. If you've used these machines, you know even the best designs are still hard to maneuver and heavy, especially when getting inside the hills. This machine here, we'll talk about the design on this thing and how horrible it is and why here in a second. I knew this was going to be a two-man mission on the side of this hill, and the backyard gets even worse. So when you're on the side of the hills with these awkward machines, make sure you use the buddy system, like me and Dalton right here. Steady that thing, make sure it doesn't flip on you. So after we go through the plugging process two times over, just like we do whenever we mow grass. We go around the perimeter at the end of it two times. So we got the potting mix with the uh, soil retentioner, moisture max, because those holes had a bunch of nasty stuff in it. So we're gonna take all that dirt out, get rid of all that, and uh, give these knockout roses a nice home to live in.
So I want to point out, when you do early spring plantings for your clients, and these plants and flowers already have buds, blooms, new leaves coming on to them, we have a frost warning coming up the next couple nights. Was it Saturday morning, or maybe a Sunday morning, Monday morning coming up? Make sure you call your clients and tell them to cover these beautiful things just for one or two nights to protect what you've done and keep that beauty for them. It's a very important step. Even though it can be time consuming, take the time, protect your time and efforts, protect your clients' money. So here is where I started showing Dalton how to use that little cultivator machine. <laughs> and like everybody knows, the cable company, they don't even bury this stuff anymore. They just lay the cable and the internet service lines right on the grass line. Now look, I didn't dig into that dirt at all. This is what happened. The very first couple minutes I was on the job showing Dalton how to hook it up. <laughs> it's just one of those days, man. And Ian had to push mow because I don't have enough room on the trailer to fit big mowers he didn't complain and neither did Dalton and this machine as you can see right here it is not a good design he has to pull on the top of the machine to make it go forward and then try to control it now I know on the Ryan machines and other models the bars are much easier because the go lever comes from beneath and all you do is pull up real quick and you grab a hold of that control arm. It's a whole lot better design, easier to control and maneuver. This machine here, man, it does a job. But, dude, you can throw this thing in the trash, man. This has got like a 21-inch plugging capacity. That's it. It's just like push mowing this yard twice with a machine that's awkward and crazy on the side of a mountain. So hey, it's up to you guys. You want, you want to get into this service, the aeration and seeding process, there's money in it. Is it an easy gig? Definitely not, all right? Nothing easy about this. Now, if you're gonna go out on the scene with two guys, you can have one man doing the plugging while the other one is doing the weasel work the mini cultivator work on the ground that definitely needs to be redone that's just bare dirt you'll have those patches over the yard that's what your second man does while the first man is doing the first plugging session then the second man will go around spreading the fertilizer like I'm doing because the fertilizer doesn't have to fall in any holes to do its work you can do that before the aeration is over no worries at the end, you get together after all the aeration is done, all the fine tuning dirt work is torn up and ready for seed. They can go around with a spreader machine, let that person do the bulk of the work. And then the second man goes around with just a small bag of seed, hand dropping in areas that need the extra seed that you tore up a little bit and along the edge of the beds. That way you don't have to spill and spread grass seed into these beds. If you're doing all this during the mulching season, the last thing you want to do is have new seed fall into the bed and then put fresh mulch on top of it. You'll be growing green grass in your fresh mulch real quick. <laughs> What's going on? I had to charge my phone for like a couple hours, so we're a step ahead of the game. Let me show you what we got done so far. The roses turn out nice. Check it. These roses here were $50 a piece and we purchased them from Lowe's. Um, the shorter versions without the lollipop effect style were definitely a little bit cheaper, but those fit that height area and they're gonna look good once they grow a little bit more, maybe two more feet up and just lollipop out right there in front of that lower part of the window. The compost amendments that we used in the hole was $50. So $200, we found the rocks in the back wood line, 
and hooked that up just for some added interest to it without spending a fortune. So I'm going to jump back while we mulch and I'm going to touch two more points on the aeration seeding process that definitely, definitely need to be talked about. The first one, the age old question, should you aerate in the spring or in the fall? When do you get the best results? Are you wasting time in the spring? That's a good question, right? Definitely need to know the answer. We're gonna hit it here. Dog, I was just tossing. What did it do his thing, man? Saying. All right, so we all know fall is the prime time to aerate seed. Okay, we know this much. But springtime is perfectly fine if you miss that application, that service in the fall, or if your yard just needs a double hit that year. Do it in the springtime. Make sure you take the effort and the step to contact the chemical company and do not apply a pre-emergent application to the turf. If you apply a pre-emergent application to the turf, this aeration seeding process is null and void because the seed won't take. It won't come up and germinate. All right. Make sure you call and cancel that service. To meet up right there. So that's like literally three wheelbarrows. Okay, that's only four. But so there, we've gone over the aeration seeding. If you have any other questions, throw it in the comments, and I'll, in my time when I sit down and do those comments, I will get back to you and let you know the answers. Um, bear with me, guys. Right now, I'm in a, I'm staying out of town right now, doing a landscape install, and I'm trying to do these videos the best I can. The last one didn't even have a voiceover on it, so hopefully I'll be all right and be able to throw out some good stuff with some good, you know feedback and talk and knowledge but yeah this turned out nice I'm not gonna waste a whole lot of time because <laughs> you'll see at the end of this video by the time we get done mulching this I just I don't even do a close out talking segment <laughs> springtime has been chaotic it's flowing fine we're getting stuff accomplished but yeah we ended up finishing this job Tuesday. It rained all day Wednesday. I had to get my truck serviced Thursday morning for a fuel filter service for the diesel. And then I had to shoot up to Richmond to start that big landscape job for my parents. Well, I just spent all day today running around to five different nurseries getting stuff. <laughs> Hey, y'all be good, love each other, be kind to each other always, and spread those good vibes of joy and happiness. Enjoy Mother Nature and be thankful for everything you got in life, always. Hey, y'all be good, Elite Landscape Style. Peace out.